I guess in order to make this a little bit interactive, I start with a couple of questions with you. So you will be my extended fireside chat. I've been coming back to DC now for a couple of years talking about 5G, so I just wanted to take kind of a pulse here in the room. So how many of you think that we are almost done with the 5G build out? Wow, you guys have been paying attention, that's awesome. <laughs> how many of you are kind of disappointed and don't believe anymore that 5G will deliver to its full potential? Seriously? Okay, that's amazing. And how many of you think we should start focusing on 6G now? Okay, there we go. We have three problems in the room. <laughs> I have 9.17 uh, minutes to prove the three of you wrong, but uh, rest assured it's not... Uh, there, there is a... I guess the benefit of working in a global company active in 180 countries. So what I will try to do now is to prove to you uh, in five steps that we're not anywhere near done with the build out. So it's good that we're aligned on that and that there is a lot more to 5G than what we have been able to deliver at this point in time as an industry, but also in our extended ecosystem. And I think that's kind of gonna be my key message that there is a lot more that needs to happen both in the device ecosystem, but also in the developer ecosystem. And then of course, many of you are gonna be very active in helping us accelerate what's left to do on the network build out. And I'll probably be coming back to Spectrum as well. So if I start with what we learned from 4G, it's worthwhile going back and looking at that. It's $1.7 trillion of GDP growth globally. Uh, that have been generated at the back end of the 4G race. The app economy was created uh, on top of the 4G innovation platform. Developers at the time really only cared about storage and compute. The wireless networks were largely commoditized and treated as a black box. Most of the monetization accrued to the over the top players. Good for them. But we need to keep an eye on why we may need to change that to deliver on the full potential of 5G. So then we move forward. We look at the kind of horizon one of 5G, which is kind of better 4G. Enhanced mobile broadband is what we industry nerds would call that. And that is really a better experience for end users. You will see us advertising better peak rates. But at the end of the day, it is the better production machine that makes the business case for most of our customers. 10x more capacity in the networks, 30% better energy efficiencies on top of that, makes kind of for the business case. So you've seen some countries, only a handful actually, where our customers have gotten to 70% plus population coverage. And that's when things start happening. That's when, when you have your customer's attention. And we have seen in these countries, our customers generate somewhere between three to 5% top line growth by upgrading subscribers to the uh, 5G bundles and better packages. So that's good, that's a pretty impressive growth, but it's limited to a few countries. Now, why is that? Because we have 244 networks launched globally, but only a handful of markets maybe two handful of customers actually generating a meaningful business on top of that new platform. Because you need to deliver a better experience to your consumers. You need to build out those networks to deliver a meaningful differentiated experience. And we see that in front runner uh, countries, the US is one of them. I think in Q1 our customers clocked 3.9%, just shy of four in top line growth. So we see it happening in the US and we should be proud of that. The second growth vector, for our industry. We've talked about it on pretty much every session up until now. It's fixed wireless. It's net new revenues for our customers. The fastest growing, and I always get this wrong, fixed broadband business is fixed wireless broadband actually in the US. Five million subscribers on 5G fixed wireless in the US today. It's great news, it's something we should be really proud of. It's net new revenues for our customers. We talk about the digital divide. We have 40, 50% of our customers globally that are on 5G are also launching fixed wireless. 
It is the way to address the digital divide, not just in the US, but certainly globally, where fiber in many countries is not an option. So that 5G is the way to go. 86, 87 billion dollars worth of revenue potential for our customers globally. To put that into perspective, that's 8% top line growth. This is real meaningful new business to our customers. And that's great news because then that additional revenue can be reinvested in the networks. And I come back to why that is important. Horizon 3 then is of course what many of us, me included, have been standing on stage here talking to you about. It's the digitalization of industries. And if there is one big growth vector in news with 5G, it is that we're going to go from consumer digitization, which was largely accomplished on top of 4G, will improve with 5G. But the, really the new big thing is enterprise and public sector digitalization. And there, we are not where we need to be. But we are in a very intense period of experimentation. So I can tell you for a fact, also based on experiments in the US, that we have every reason to believe that it will happen. We have hundreds of proof of concepts, pilots across the US, manufacturing, mining. Uh, we see uh, smart city type solutions, healthcare solutions, of course also accelerated by, by COVID now, right? So there is a lot of use cases that we have been able to prove. So we know that the economics, the latest BTG report, $1.5 trillion of GDP growth in the US, 4.5 million new jobs. We kind of have line of sight to that. We know it's doable. But what's holding us back then? And that is the ecosystem. We're short on devices. There is 1,900 something devices out there in the world. Only 20% of those are available in the US. And out of those 1,900 devices, there is only 50, 3%, 50 devices globally that are actually built into a drone, a robot, uh, XR goggles. So it's not native in the, in the devices yet. So device ecosystem has a long way to go. Why am I confident? Look at China, and I, I hate to go there every now and then, but look at China. Uh, 5,000 private networks sold, 25,000 private networks on order across the three op leading operators in China. They have gotten to in a level of industrialization that we have not yet. So the next big thing for us, and that's kind of horizon four in 5G if you wish, is the device ecosystem activation. We need to find a way to get more sensors, activators, devices, natively built into devices so that our factory team in Louisville, Texas can deliver on some of the use cases they're dreaming about. And I'm gonna be very transparent with you. We have an autonomous guided vehicle, well, we have like 30 of them, with duct tape and uh, <laughs> a 5G modem that's like oversized, strapped to it, just to prove the use case. Of course, they now want the device, a chip, a sensor built into that device. That's what I'm talking about. So the, the industrialization in our device ecosystem has not come to, to scale yet. On the network side, we have a lot of work that remains to be done. We keep talking about the 5G networks as a percentage of 4G overbuild. It's the wrong way to think about it. To deliver on the full potential of 5G, we're looking for a much more distributed mobile edge compute type platform that is accessible to devices in real time. That is when exponential innovation starts happening. That is when mutually reinforcing disruptive technology developments across IoT, nanotech, batteries, uh, AI, XR, computer vision, all of those adjacent but mutually reinforcing disruptive technology developments can benefit from that highly distributed wireless edge compute platform. And we have a lot of work that remains to be done on that. And then last but not least, and this is maybe one of the biggest lessons learned from the 4G races, these networks can no longer be considered commodity and black boxes. Mark was into it. We need to find a way to open up those networks to developers in an open, intuitive, and programmable way. 
so that you can program great applications on top of the network. Developers should not just worry about storage and compute. Wireless networking should be right there for developers to build great services on top of those networks. I know we can do it. We don't have to go too far to see really good examples, but time is of essence. We need to mobilize. Many of you can probably make a difference helping us expediting spectrum, zoning permitting, which is kind of slowing down the build for us. And then we will do our level best to continue activating, working with our device partners, working with our customers on building out that highly distributed compute platform, and then of course working with the extended developer ecosystem to expose those capabilities to developers in a, in a meaningful way. We made our single largest acquisition just in that space to find a way into the developer world and help our customers, competitors and partners put those network APIs uh, together and serve them up to developers in, in a good way. So, a lot of work remains to be done. I'm very happy to see that you guys are on board with the single notion that we're not done, we're just getting started. Thanks for your attention today, have a wonderful day.